This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1970-73 Carryover League. Today, we are in the National League Central with the Cubs and the Reds. Um, and it's, you know, the Reds era here, of course. Um, we are approaching the All-Star break. And just a brief kind of look at some of the things that have happened uh, to other star franchises, I'm including the Reds, but to other star franchises going into the All-Star break, we've seen league-wide slumps, some not so big, but uh, let's take a look at the general standings um, throughout some of these divisions, and I'll tell you about them. Um, the Orioles and Red Sox still need to play in this round, but uh, they lost interleague series to the Reds and Pirates. The Indians lost a series to the Expansion Ohio players. Uh, in the National League West, it went a little haywire here, as we saw the Dodgers lose four out of five uh, to the Astros, and the Giants have come back. And the uh, Pirates uh, got swept by the Cardinals. Cardinals got swept by the Cubs. So... Do the Reds follow the same kind of a slump? Well, let's just go see what happens. Game one in Chicago in Wrigley Field. Advantage Cubs, because the Reds have their number four starter, Ross Scrimsley, against Fergie Jenkins. But it doesn't work out for the Cubs, as in the third inning, with two outs, Tony Perez, your National League front runner for MVP, it's a two-run homer, then in the fourth inning, solo shots by Lee May and Bernie Carbo. And then again in the fifth, it's Lee May with a three-run homer. My goodness. And it's quickly 7-0 off the great Fergie Jenkins. Meanwhile, Ross Grimsley, a starter six, uh, the weakest pitcher on the red rotation. He's good, but, you know, he's okay, I guess. Uh, he would get a C G S O four four-hitter, two walks, three Ks, and a complete game. Reds win, 7 0, and it's same old Reds. Let's go to game two. Can the Cubs manage a split at home in the first two games? And the answer is yes. It's Don Gullett versus Rick Russell. So actually, the Reds get better and the Cubs get worse at starter, but it doesn't matter because in the first inning, the Cubs do Cub things for once a single, a double, a couple more singles, and Ernie Banks with a three run homer. Five quick runs off a of gullet. But the Reds get a single run in the second. Another one in the third. It's 5-2. Get a little nervous here until the seventh inning when Gullet, who pitched well after that rough first, they left him in there too long. Gets up a two-run homer to Jose Cardinal. It's 7-2. Reds try and make it interesting in the ninth. But break up the Cubs. They were able to get a split at home in Wrigley. Now the duty is to go to Cincinnati and win a game or two if they can. Let's see what happens. Game three, Riverfront Stadium. The newly opened Riverfront. Uh, it'll be Burt Hooten for the Cubs. Dick Bosman acquired in the offseason to be the number two man. He's struggled this year, but not today. Uh, the Reds score early. An error by Ron Santo cost them two runs. And then Tony Perez, two more, two run homer. Four nothing. And before the Cubs... Again, three-run homer by Lee May. It is seven, nothing. Bosman does give up a two-run homer in the sixth, uh, but he does give the Reds some great pitching today. Seven and two-thirds innings out of Dick Bosman. That is a that's a big story. They need Bosman 
uh, who was brilliant for the Washington Senators a year ago and would be outstanding as a relief man as well. They're trying to hope they can catch lightning in the bottle with Bosman. And he does so today. Seven and two thirds, just three runs. Good enough for a potent red offense, and they do win this game 7-3. So, game four in Riverfront. Can the Cubs even this thing up on the road? The pitching matchup. It's going to be Fergie Jenkins coming back on short rest against Gary Nolan, well-rested, and it shows. Uh, a two-base error off of Jim Hickman uh, gets, gives the Red it's an easy run here in the second. But in the fifth inning, Nolan surrenders solo shots to Jim Hickman and Ron Santo, and the Cubs have a 2-1 lead and are hoping to even this thing up. It will not happen. It will not happen. Bottom of the sixth, Johnny Bench, two-run homer. Then in the seventh inning, like I said, folks, your National League MVP, I don't want to crown him yet. I made the mistake of doing that early last year, but... Uh, Tony Perez, they load the bases, and he delivers the Grand Slam, effectively ending the, se the series here. Uh, another 7-2 game. I don't know, I'm make it 8-2. And Gary Nolan's pitched brilliantly. Uh, get the Reds are getting that starting pitching. they got the relief pitching. They've added a lot of defense on the bench. So they've got everything, really, to do the Reds. This is probably the best of the Reds teams we've seen in the last three years, which is... Uh, Nice compliment since they've been the number one seed the last two years and they're trying to get it again. Actually, the Reds and the Mets opened the season against each other and the Mets won that three games to two. And that is the difference between these two squads, between our number one and number two thus far, with the Dodgers stumbling. Eight to two victory for the Reds. They are up three games to one. And for the Cubs, it's going to get a little worse today. For a game five in Cincinnati, the Cubs have to send their number three starter, Larry Gura, the guy that they like to hide in their rotation. He, they have to have a lefty starter, and Gura for the Cubs in 1970 had a 379 ERA in 38 innings, and he's forced into the start today. And for the Cincinnati Reds, they will go to their ace, Don Gullett. His second start in the series, he got knocked around in the only loss. Again, 16-6 with a 264 ERA in 1971. Game number 412 of the year. Gura and Gullet in Cincinnati. Here we go. Let's get started. Jose Cardinal leads off the game. 47 skies the center. Becker, 34, rolls to third. Billy Williams, 66, off Gullet's card, single one of 14. He cannot get it. Rolls a 19. Bobby Tolan of the Bells. The Reds have juggled the lineup, seeing their first lefty of the series. Plus, with a 3-1 series lead, they've got some of their bench players starting today. Give them, give them some work. But Bobby Tolan, the first four will all be familiar. Then it gets mixed up after that. Bobby Tolan, 66 off Gura. Double one of six is a base hit. Double A Steeler. But... Randy Hunley, minus three-arm catcher for the Cubs. So for now, Tolan will stay put. Pete Rose, 63 off Gura. Pitcher X, he's an E-0 pitcher. That is not a good look for the Reds. And it's a 1-6-3 double play. Tough one there. You can thank Randy Hunley for enabling that double play. And here he is, folks, Tony Perez. Let's look at his card before he bats so you can see this monster. Tony Perez having a magnificent year. 13 homers and 35 RBIs in 26 games. Absolutely crushing it. Uh, he's doing what Johnny Bench did last year. Bench is having a great year as well. Perez is having a better year than Bench. Here is Tony Perez. The pitch. 2-4. He skies the center. Top of two. Jim Hickman. 3-6. Let's take a look at this Jim Hickman card. It is 1970. He had hit 315 with 32 homers, 93 walks. Magnificent card. 3-6 uh, is gone. And the Cubs get the first lead of the game. Ron Santo, 56 is a K. Ernie Banks, 1-6 is a K. 
One six for Ernie Banks is a K. And Randy Hunley. One seven is a K. Alrighty. We go to the bottom of the, of the second inning. It'll be Johnny Bench leading off for the Reds. 6-10, bouncer to short. This is Cassander. 2-E-23 at short. And that is going to be a single off his Tunis. Bench is on for Ted Savage, the left fielder acquired from Milwaukee in the offseason. 1-4, sky's the left. Concepcion hits lefties pretty well, is moved into this number six spot against lefties. 4-4, four, four, third X. Gura, a 2-E-26, uh, not Gura, uh, Santa, a third, a 2-E-26. He gives up a single. Not good defense for the Cubs here in the second. Batting seventh, Ken Suarez, a DH. He's basically Johnny Bench's backup in the rare chance Bench would get injured. Bench actually has his injury on a 12, indicating that, you know, he played... 150 plus starts. Ken Suarez, 4 5, bounces to short. And this is Kessinger again. Ground ball B. Runs on the corners, two outs for Tommy Helms. And 2 7 pops the third. Top of the third. It'll be Kessinger. 48 is a pop to short. Del Unser, 2-4. This guy's the right. And Cardinal, 57 is a K. Bottom of the third. John Vukovic, 59. Second X. He is Tony Press's defensive replacement third baseman. He's actually starting at third base while Perez is your DH today. Or Perez, excuse me, is at first base today. They have Lee May on the bench. Bobby Tolan, 2-7 is a base hit. Pete Rose, 3-10 is the sky to center. And with two outs, it's Tony Perez. 55 is a walk. Two on, two outs. For Johnny Bench, let's take a look at his card before he swings, folks. He's got a couple MVPs. Would, you know, no, no way is he any worse in the past few years. It's just that Tony Perez is better than him this year. Uh, is all. So Bench is probably second or third in MVP voting right now. The pitch to Johnny Bench. Two, eight, maybe not. <laughs> Two, eight, Johnny Bench on cue. You saw the card, a three-run home run, and the Reds have taken the lead. And we can say they are 18 outs away from winning the series and increasing their lead in the National League North at the All-Star break. Ted Savage, 62, pitcher. And Concepcion, 37, double one to 17 is a base hit. And with two outs is Ken Southbound Suarez, 63, pitcher X. And the best thing about Gurry's in an A0 pitcher. And there you go. Okay. Well, Gura has, well, you know, done Gura stuff today. Doesn't have a really good strat card, and the Reds are, are exploiting it. Three to one. We go to the fourth. Be Glenn Beckert. 1-9, base it. Now this is where Gullet's got to pitch his team uh, to this clinching win. And, you know, don't prolong the series. Billy Williams, 49, pops the first. Jim Hickman, 2-7, another great day for him. Triple, 1-7, double. That's a triple. He's got the harder parts of the cycle completed. It'll be Ron Santo, the runner at third and one out in a 3-2 game. They're going to bring the infield up. Santo, 4-10. Center X. This is Tolan, a 2-E-9 in center field. Let me double check that. Yes, 2-E-9 in center field. Gets the fly ball 8. So that's not the sack fly. So Hickman has to stay at third. It was too shallow. And it's the big earn. Ernie Banks. Let's take a look at Ernie Banks. Last good year, 1970. Ernie Banks... In half a season at 12 home runs, that prorates to 25 or so, and he crushes lefties, as you can see, and provides decent defense at first, and a platoon. The pitch to Ernie Banks. 58 off Gullet is a bouncer to second. This is Helms, and he makes the play. Tommy Helms is the unsung hero of the, of the Reds. 
giving you that 1E10 defense and the B-hit and running ability at the bottom of the lineup. Just keeping things together. It says it had some big hits in games, too. And on cue, he is up. Let's take a look at his card. He comes to the plate. So you know what happens, of course. They decide we need a little bit more punch at second with Joe Morgan. But really, I really like this Tommy Helms card. It is 258 batting average in 580-some plate appearances. But the B-bunning, the B-hit and running, and the 1-E-10 at second base, he often will just hit and run behind Concepcion or Savage or Carbo a lot of times. He's kind of reminds me a little bit of what Bud Harrelson provides to the New York Mets as just an, a steady, a steady force in the infield, which can turn some timely double plays. That's my Tommy Helms tribute. He leads off here in the fourth. The pitch to Tommy. One six, single on a one, and he gets the single on a one. Thank you, Tommy. I set that up for you perfectly. Single one on his card, and he gets it. So he's on at first, to the dismay of Larry Gura and the Cubs. Now we have John Vukovic. Okay, so we know this is the big red machine. Let's take a look at Vukovic. But they have certain days where they like to get the bench players involved. And Vukovic was brought on the team to simply replace Tony Perez at third base in the latter innings as a one. John Vukovic would be a one many times in his career while also hitting below 200 many times in his career, just like this card, where it's 166. And he's a debunner, which doesn't help matters. The pitch to John Vukovic. 66 off the Gura card is a double to center field. Helms will hold up, and the bottom of the red lineup delivers. Second and third, you're turning this thing over. This is not a good recipe, Larry Gura. Danger of breaking early here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hits. If you get 12 base runners through four, I call you broken. Bobby Tolan here. The pitch to Bobby. 66. Oh boy. Double one to six. Single dot dot. That is a two run double. And that makes it 5 2. Pete Rose. 1 6. Let's take a look at Pete Rose's card. Triple one, single dot dot there. We uh, had a choice in the offseason of the 1973 MVP card of Pete Rose or this card, the 1970 version. And we like this one better. Average is not as high. Doesn't get the MVP because of his teammates. But he has 37 doubles, 15 homers, 73 walks, and is a beast stealer and is a better defensive player in right field. All of that in my estimation, means that Rose's 70 card is better than his 73 card, which will probably be added next year when the league, when these 70 cards have to go away. But here it is, triple one, single dot dot. That will score the run. It is six to two, and the Cubs are going to do the early hook on Larry Gurr because this is an elimination game for the series. They're down four, and they got to stop the bleeding, and the Reds just crush lefties even with bench players at the bottom of the lineup. Um, they're going to go with Ray Burris. And this would be a huge moment for the Cubs if they can get the bullpen to go long, shut down the Reds, and make a comeback and keep the series going. That would be a big move for the Cubs. Burris in the fourth, runner at first, nobody out, and it'll be Tony Perez. Bench, Savage, and all righties coming up for Ray Burris. The pitch to Tony Perez. 49 off Burris, a single one of 15 is a base hit. Two on, nobody out for Johnny Bench. 54, third X. This is Santo. They need a double play here to the Cubs. Is it 2E26? No, he is makes the error. Too many errors in 1971 for Ron, unfortunately, here. That hurts. That one really hurts. The seven, excuse me, 1972 Ron Santo. That's a shame. Uh, the bases are reloaded now for Ted Savage. Let's take a look at this guy. I haven't shown his card yet. You know, if there's a team that shouldn't have a designated hitter, it should, it should be the Cincinnati Reds. They, their pitcher should have to bat where we have the universal DH in both leagues just to handicap them in some way. But they found this guy off Milwaukee as an extra player, 279, 
with 12 homers and half a season for the Brewers in 70. And he will bat here with the bases loaded, nobody out. The pitch to Ted Savage. 37 is ball four. And this is getting ugly before it gets pretty. Bases loaded still. Dave Concepcion. You just got to play it back and hope you get a double play sooner or later in this. The pitch to Concepcion. 211 pops to second. Ken Suarez. He's not very good. You're hoping for a double play here as well. 58. Burris strikes him out. And here's a big bat for Tommy Helms as they bat around. They really need to get Helms out to the Cubs. As we see the 7-2 score for like the third time in the series. Interesting. Tommy Helms. Bases loaded. Two outs. Chance to put the Cubs away right here. The pitch to Tommy Helms. 1-9. Skies the center field. So the Cubs are still breathing here. 7-2. They need Gullet to implode. Uh, not betting on that so yeah here we go randy hunley leading off in the fifth 612 skies are right kessinger 411 rolls the first del Unser, 66 single one of 14 he gets it cardinal with a runner at first and two outs 38 is a bouncer to third Bottom of the fifth, but first let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay, it's John Vukovic leading off in the fifth. 55 off Burris is a walk. You don't want to walk 166 hitters when you're down 7 to 2. Bobby Tolan, 65, short X. This is uh, Kessinger, he's good defensively, a 2 e 23 Can only get the fielder's choice there. Tolan, uh, he's not going to steal. One out, Pete Rose. 2-3, pops the first. And Tony Perez, 65, bouncer to short again, and he makes the play. So two fairly decent innings for Ray Burris. We go to the six, 7-2, it's Becker. 58, second X. This is Helms. Of course, the one at second base. Billy Williams, 34, rolls the third. And Jim Hickman, 48, is a pop to short. Gullet is not having any of it. He wants to redeem himself for giving up seven runs in the only loss of this series. Bottom of the sixth, Burroughs is a relief three. He will continue for his third inning of relief. Johnny Bench, 310, bounce to short. Ted Savage, 17's a K. And Concepcion, 34, short. Not bad work for Burris, all things considered. Kept his team in it. Top of the seventh inning for Gullet, who is his breaking inning. All the defense the Reds have is in the game. Yeah, they got everything they need with Vukovic starting the game at third base. So, in the seventh, it's Ron Santo leading it off. One seven's a K. The big earn, Ernie Banks. Three six, all the car earlier, folks. One and 19, that is gone. The big earn. And the Cubs move within a grand slam of this game. Randy Hunley, six ten off goal. It is a bounce to short. Concepcion, his defense improved in the off season to a two from a three. And he makes the play here. And Kessinger. 2-4, grounds the third base. Stretch time here in Cincinnati. We've been enjoying listening to the Brothers Isley LP of 1969. The boys from Cincinnati. Actually, they have a red, you can say red's uniforms on, so to speak. Um, great LP. From 1969, the Brothers Isley. Let's get back to the game here. In the bottom of the seventh. Burris will come out after three. We'll get to the back of the Cub bullpen. Try and keep it going. It'll be, actually it'll be Ray Newman. Will come on in the seventh inning. For the Cubs. Ray Newman. To the bottom of the lineup. Weakest part. Ken Suarez. 1-5 is hit by the pitch. It's not what you want to do to the bottom of the lineup for the Cincinnati Reds. Tommy Helms, 55, is okay. Sean Vukovic has been on two out of three times with his 166 card. 1-8, the sky's the center. And with two outs, Bobby Tolan, 
of the Bells. 211. Grounds a third. Nice inning for Ray Newman there. 7 3 in the eighth. We have Clay Carroll available if needed. He is on a two year scoreless streak, which is remarkable for the Reds' uh, closer. With six outs to go, any trouble for Gullet, they'll go to him. No defense to bring in. It's Del Unser. 58. Sky's the center. Jose Cardinal, 311, is a K. And Becker, 45, rolls to second base. It's dominant Don Gullet. Another great start for the Reds in this series. We saw Grimsley with a shutout. Nolan had a nice game. Bosman pitched well. And now finally Gullet has a nice game. All against the potent Cub offense. So this does not portend well for the rest of the National League. The Reds seem to have all the answers this year to what failed them in the postseason a year ago. All right, bottom of the eighth, we'll let the Cubs bring in their closer, Lloyd Allen, to uh, see if he can go pitch another scoreless inning as he faces the righties. Uh, it'll be Pete Rose and uh, Murder Reserve after that. Pete Rose, 2-4, rolls a second. Tony Perez, 33, grounds a short. And Johnny Bench, 35 strikes out. Really, it's a real shame for the Cubs. They had Gura start. There was really no way to hook him any sooner. Uh, and they gave him a quick hook anyway. Because most of the times, in the carrier league, I, I really want the starting pitchers to go four innings at least. Because you only have an eight-man pitching staff. So unfortunately, that would come back to bite the Cubs today. As we go to the ninth inning, Billy Williams, Hickman, and Sano, the meat of the uh, Cub lineup. Carroll's throwing in the bullpen. And it's Billy Williams leading it off. 35 is a base hit. Hickman could be the final batter for Gullet here in the ninth. Hickman, 48, pops to short. He will continue against Ron Santo. 46 is a sky to left. And with two outs, it's Ernie Banks who homered in his last at bat. The pitch to Ernie Banks. 57 off Gullet is a strikeout. Dandy Don Gullet with a complete game for the Reds. They win this series 4-1. Uh, clearly, they were not like any of the other top teams in the league who struggled in the All-Star break. They just chugged right over these Cubs. And only lost that one game. Gullet. Six hits. Three runs. They were all earned. No walks for Don Gullet. Seven strikeouts. And he gets that complete game. Lloyd Allen did okay with a strikeout. Good relief pitching for the Cubs. Walking a K for Ray Newman. Uh, Ray Burris did a pretty decent job. Made it interesting in the fourth. Did allow, let's see. Oh, the inherited runners scored. It was only one of them. He gave up. Hit a walk and a K in that inning. And then another walk and another K. Larry Gurra has to deal with that loss. He is on the short list of the Cubs. You know, Gurra will actually probably either be traded or put on waivers and go to Kansas City in the offseason where he blossoms. So that's kind of the future for Gurra. Uh, 1 to 9, 0 1 8. Let's see, 10 hits. These seven runs. Uh, we have five that are earned. A walk and no strikeouts. 1 0 9, 0 1 0 8, 7 11, 3 6. 0 7 4 4. And we'll take a look at the year to date stats for the two teams. It's really been impressive how the Reds have just been the Reds for three straight years now. Uh, at least through the regular season, they just just keep dumping on teams. But in the postseason, their hitting has faltered at bad times against the Orioles two years ago when they got swept in the World Series and against the San Francisco Giants in the divisional round last year. 
So here we go. The, uh, let's start with the Cubs. They are now 12 and 15. So they were in rough shape and they swept the Cardinals to get back to 500, only to lose four out of five to the Reds and are 12 and 15. Hitting 257, 449 ERA. Uh, Furry Jenkins is now 5 and 3. Two got roughed up by the Reds for two of his three losses today. Still pitching oh, uh, well overall. Got a 389 ERA, and it was much. It was probably closer to three before the Reds rolled into town. It's a tough break there for Fergie. Fergie does have five complete games. He's still a possibility to be the, their All-Star representative. As far as the power goes, uh, a nice year for uh, Santo. Seven homer and 20 RBI, hitting around 270. Uh, Billy Williams has eight homer, uh, 38 for 107. He's having a nice year. But for the Reds, they are 19 and 8. They are hitting 285 with a 424 ERA that's still. Uh, they had some tough competition earlier in the season against the Mets and Giants. Some high scoring tussles there. But they still have a 19 and 8 record with a tough schedule. Plus, they play the Red Sox in interleague. So the Reds have really had a brutal schedule and are still 19 and 8 against it. That is a sign of a tremendous team, Hall of Fame team here. Uh, Gullet has three complete games. He's four and two. It's really been the bullpen that has been carried the Reds here, as they are five and one with seven saves. And again, like I said, Clay Carroll has not given up a run. Um, offensive live course. We mentioned Tony Perez. It is 13 homer and uh, 32 RBI at the break. Um, bench eight and 28 in those numbers. Let's see who believes the club in hitting here. Oh boy, it's close. It's yeah, Tony Perez is 39 for 104. It's about 380, 370 there. Yeah, the Reds. And when we look at the overall standings in the National League now, there has been a change at the top. Sorry, Dodgers, you slumped at a bad time against Houston. You were playing 700 ball, now you're playing 630 ball, and you have the Mets. The, uh, the Mets still have to play. They have to play the Braves. And the Braves are a tough team. I'm predicting the Reds to be the number one seed at the All-Star break. What we'll have to wait and see what happens in this series, of course. But it's been a great first half thus far. Thanks for checking this out, and we'll see you next time.